Howdy everyone, Cub here. Welcome to Minecraft 1.13. This is a snapshot review video for both snapshots 17W43 A and B, as well as 17W45 A. So let's go ahead and get right into it on the changes in this snapshot. So we're first going to start off with snapshot 17W43 B and all the changes in that. First change is that when you create a new world, you will see that it now shows the percentage of the area created until it gets to 100% where obviously it starts to build a terrain and then you're in the world. This next change is a small one which probably will only affect about one half of 1% of you. However, I do want to mention it because those people who are affected will see a dramatic change in the controls for the game. And that is because the game now detects and changes your default key bindings based upon what type of keyboard you have. So if I go into controls here, you'll see these are my controls for the WASD keyboard. These are just the default controls, but some people have an Azerty keyboard, which is a different keyboard layout, and here are the control scheme for that. So this will now change automatically if you have a keyboard that is not the default keyboard. These are now rebound to different keys, depending on your keyboard layout. Also, in regards to the controls, the keys each have now been spelled out. Instead of having just L shift and L control, it now spells out left shift and left control left mouse button, middle button, instead of just M button and L button. The next change is in video settings, and we have ourselves now a FS resolution, which changes the resolution of your game, and the game actually temporarily stopped recording here, but here's the resolution once it finally started again. So, I'm not sure if this is actually going to work or not without crap. Oh, yep, it works! Ha ha ha! Whoops! Alright, let's go back to the other resolution. The lightweight Java game library for the game has now been updated to a newer version, which means the game should be a little bit more stable and also should have less bugs. The next big change is the addition of data packs to the game. Data packs are basically resource packs on steroids. What they do is they allow you to add custom loot tables, custom advancements, custom functions, and eventually custom recipes and structures to your worlds. And the way this works is you can simply add the data pack to your world via a file folder, then type slash reload, and it will reload everything. So if I had added a data pack to my world and hit the reload command, then I would get different loot in my dungeon chests. I'd have different advancements that I could achieve and have different functions that I could use in the game. So this just allows you to customize your game much further. And also, I do want to mention right now that Minecraft 1.13 is going to be a technical almost exclusively technical update. So that means there won't be a whole lot of new features, but a lot of behind the scene things similar to data packs, which add a lot of functionality to the game. They're also planning to remove the block ID limit, which is currently the major stepping stone to being able to add a whole bunch more new blocks, hopefully coming in 1.14. So I just wanted to mention that and let's move on to the next thing. Finally, there's one bug fix that's relevant to the game in particular AFK fish farming. And that is that keys will no longer get stuck when you toggle full screen. So if you use the F11 key to toggle your full screen and hold down right mouse button, you used to be able to make the game think that you were still right clicking and then use your computer while doing so. However, that bug has now been fixed and you have to find another method to AFK fish. So that's all the changes in the week 43 snapshot. Let's move on now to the week 45 snapshot. We have now upgraded to snapshot 17W45A, and there are some changes in this snapshot we're going to take a look at. The first change is that the horse model has changed. So the horses are now much more blocky, their necks appear to be a little bit longer, and their tails have also changed. So there's a totally new horse model, so they look a lot different. By far the biggest change to the game this week is to commands, and I can show you this if I go ahead and type in slash right here. You'll see that it pulls up a UI that is very much going to change soon and is very much a work in progress, so it's not going to stay like this forever. Uh, by the way, this is actually in the game. This is not an external bit, uh, external program or anything. This is actually part of what's in the game. And you can see there's also some cool auto, auto tab features here. Uh, this does not really work in multiplayer yet, I will say, but there is some interesting things that I will tell you guys about this. So first of all, suffice to say that Enough syntax has changed with the commands, and enough with the command themselves, that if you use commands of any type in any world for any reason, chances are you're going to need to change almost all of them. So just be aware of that before 
opening up this snapshot in those worlds, a lot of stuff will definitely break if you're using a lot of commands. And I'll go ahead and just show you a few things, or actually just list off a few things that have changed that I think are relatively significant. These are mostly the, the commands that have been removed due to redundancy, or their syntax has changed significantly enough to uh, be notable. So the slash toggle downfall command is no longer in the game. Uh, instead, you want to use uh, slash weather. So if I do slash weather, you see it's there. Slash toggle downfall is not. If you do slash game mode, so let me just go ahead and do slash game mode, and you try to type 2, let's say, for adventure mode, you'll see that you can no longer do that. You can no longer use game mode 2 or game mode A. You can't use shorthand. You have to actually do the whole slash game mode adventure, just like that, to change yourself into adventure mode or into creative mode. I can't do, like, slash game mode C, for instance, or slash game mode 1. That is now gone. has to be slash game mode creative. And you also have to specify a target, which I will specify myself, and there we go. Back into creative. There's also a whole bunch of other commands that have been changed. For instance, slash test for, slash test block, slash stats are now all under slash execute. There's slash scoreboard. That has changed pretty dramatically, so slash scoreboard team is now just the simple slash team, like that. So there is no slash scoreboard team. Uh, there is still slash scoreboard, but no no team tag. Same thing for slash scoreboard players tag. Uh, that's just slash tag now. So you can see exactly what you can do with that right there. There are also no more custom game modes. So it doesn't, uh, sorry, game rules rather. So you can't have any more custom game rules. It wasn't really that well supported anyway. So that is now gone. Other things that are gone, the slash advancement test is gone. The slash enchant is gone and is now under slash modify item. And there's also been a huge number of shorthand renames for commands. I'm not going to go too much into de detail about this, but I will provide a link to the change log in the description of the video that shows you all the changes which are quite far reaching and will definitely affect any commands you have in your worlds. So that is it guys for snapshot 17w. 45A, and I'm not quite sure about the horse model. Let me know what you guys think about it. The baby horse model, I think the necks are a little bit too long, perhaps. Just a little bit shorter would be better, I think, for the baby horses, at least. But that is it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been Cobb. Goodbye.